Hey everybody, so I'm back to talk to you about why would you want to draw a series of 25 or more of the same thing? Some of you might think, I'm new to drawing, why would I draw the same thing over and over again? It would be better for me to draw something different so that I can learn something different. But the thing is, is that there are common things that you're going to run into that you might have to draw frequently. I would think of them like some of these series that I've done, 25 hands, 25 feet, 25 cats, 25 dogs. So today we're gonna to talk about cats and why you might want to draw 25 cats. It's just because it's a common character that you might run into in you know, storytelling or in painting or in some way, like a com if you're drawing a comic book, you might wind up having to have a cat in the scene or as a character. So it's something that is commonly run into that you can quickly draw to get better skills and to um, brush up on your technique so that when you do have to draw it for something that you really care about, you're already practiced and skilled and ready. So, but the main reason that you really wanna draw cats is that you don't want to have your cat painting wind up like this. Uh, meow. So this is a painting by Abraham Mignon. It's called Bouquet with a Cat and Mouse Trap. Now to be fair, this was painted sometime in the 1600s, several hundred years before the camera was invented. So this poor soul had to paint this cat apparently without a cat anywhere near him because check out the face, it looks like a human nose. But it's super freaky. So the reason that you would wanna practice drawing and practice drawing things multiple, multiple times is that it's really going to prevent you from this kind of embarrassment. So if this kind of information is helpful for you, remember that I've got my online course on my website, LZM Studio, that goes into more depth with all of these subjects that I pre present to you all on YouTube. So you can go to lzmstudio.com to find out more about that course. So now let's take a look at this practice and how I would suggest that you draw 25 or more cats. So with these drawings, you can start off with looking for other people's gesture drawings of cats. So that's what these first, I would say 18 were. So someone else had drawn drawings of cats and then my student and I just copied the drawings. So you can see that they kind of segmented out like bullet pointing where the joints are, where the feet are. There's not specific detail. You're not drawing the thickness of the leg, but you're just trying, trying to sort of capture the pose that the cat is in. You can also see this was a student of mine who for a couple of years around the age of nine really ate toast for just every single meal. Like I could not get her to try a slice of an apple when she was in the studio for snacks. Um, and she told me that every meal she ate toast. So you can see we drew a little cartoon toast over there too. That's a total aside. Anyways, back to the cats. So, um, you know, draw them standing on different objects, lying down, sitting, jumping, walking. Um, <laughs> and then what you're going to want to do is move to, let me move these out of the way here you want to move to actually drawing photos of a cat so that you can start to break that down, break the different segments of the body down, the different segments of the legs, the arms um, down so that you can do those simplified drawings yourself. And you can see that these are not quite as simple as some of those drawings because I added in a little bit of the thickness of the legs, the arms, etc. But so this one I did right here and then this one, I love this one actually, drawing a cat that's sort of like in a little stretchy pose. And we actually added some detail like the collar, um, stripes on the tail we started getting into. So you could spend more time on it and actually add more detail like the pattern of the fur. Remember, I do have that other video that's how to draw the pattern of the fur on a cat. And so I'll link that here. Um, and then this one is really funny this jumping cat. <laughs> so you can see that I just drew that one in sort of more wireframe where I was trying to figure out like where are the joints. Um, it's a little bit hard because this photo is a little bit unclear. Um, it's not the highest resolution and the thickness of the arm is really important here. Um, 
A challenge for me is getting the rotation of the head so you can see that my head is rotated up a little bit whereas this is a little bit more down like the eyes are down lower so drawing a quick sketch of it like that helps me to see where are my flaws where can I make improvements um, but doing this kind of practice with the same subject matter in many different poses is really going to make you a much better artist especially if you're looking to draw figures, animals, action, storytelling, comic book style where you really want to be able to tell a story, there's going to be movement and um, just different positioning involved of the same characters. And so you would even want to try to take photos of your cat in 15 or 25 different poses so that you could really capture that character from different positions and angles. But even if you don't have a cat, what I did was we just looked at a million different cat pictures online, saved the ones that were interesting, different poses, and then drew from them. So I hope this really helps you out. Remember, you don't want to wind up like. So draw cats, draw dogs, draw animals, draw birds, whatever. Um, whatever it is that you're looking to draw and draw realistically, you'll want this practice of drawing small, quick sketches of them over and over and over again until you become the artist you'd like to be.